I think I got a DUI over here. Get over here. Let's arrest him. Go ahead, hit him. He's got a public pretender. I'm legally blind, and I can't always tell from the films what happened, and I can't drive. So some of these questions relate to that. Okay. So, so she's, he's pretty much setting it up so they can put him in the dungeon. And he refused to do that. Did you just hear that? He's leading the witness. Kenny doesn't have a but chance. In, it. in the year 2002, I was no knock rated by the chief of police, Michael Moore, of LAPD with an entire SWAT team twice in the same month. Since that date, I began studying the history of America and constitutional law. I am an autodidactic constitutional law scholar. Over the past couple years, what I've done is I've been able to devise a system, understanding that the police have created a very rigid set of policies, procedures, and protocols that they use to arrest you. I've also created a very rigid set of policies, procedures, and protocols for you to follow that gives you back the power when you're forced to interact with these jackboot thug pigs. It has become a tyrannical jackboot thug pig, police state, prison state, death state. I will win the governorship and I will change the policies from the top down. Let the record reflect. They've identified the guy in the jumpsuit who was tortured and fought back against the pigs. Please! Get out of the car! I'm asking get you out to please please stop. Stop. Get out of the car now. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Hey, please! Get out of the car. Um, what did you do? Did you tell the defendant why you had stopped him? Yes. What did you tell him? I told him, um, I, I introduced myself again and I let him know that I'd stopped him because he was all over the right way. All right. Now, to be fair, had you ever met uh, the defendant, Mr. Dehart, before this day? Mm -hmm. Did you have any prior knowledge whatsoever of the defendant before this interaction? What did the uh, defendant say in response when you told him why he had been stopped? He told me that he didn't realize that he had swerved. He was, had been pulling his hair back. And he may have swerved in that, but he was so sorry he didn't realize that he was swerved. Right. So did you offer to do a sobriety test, or did you go back to your car and radio in, hey, hey, I think I got a DUI over here. Get over here. Let's arrest him. Car smells like weed, uh, and he was in the opposite lane okay. on Sevilla Road. Did you ask the defendant for his license, registration, proof of insurance, that sort of thing? Yes. And was he able to provide those? You care to see your driver's license, registration, proof insurance, please? All right, thank you. So you know where he lives. You have his insurance. You have his registration. You, you have his address on his driver's license. Didn't you talk to his mom? Hey. Hey, this, my name's Shelby. I work for the Blunt County Sheriff's Office. Oh, this is John Lane's Nice to meet you. Nice to hear you. I'd say nice to meet you, but we're not next to each other. <laughs> We were having a conversation, but he continually was talking. Um, so he was distracted a bit and it took him a moment to find the uh, big registration. Did, did that seem at all at odd to you or indicate anything to you or anything like that? that? He was maybe upset or nervous about something because he was continually talking. He did not stop talking from the time that. Objection. 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 It doesn't matter if you talk a lot, you talk a little, you look away, you look at them. Everything you do is suspicious because of Terry versus Ohio. Let me ask you, so was it pretty common for you to have asked Deputy McCowan to join you at this traffic stop? Is, would that be out of the ordinary at all? No, typically any time. No. Why would it not be out of the ordinary? Because we don't need and shouldn't have women cops because they can't take on a man. Please get your hands off of me, Go please. Ahead. Get out of the car, Kenny. Go ahead, hit him. He's got a public pretender. I know these are disturbing questions. I, I'm simply trying to find out the details of various things that happened. Uh, some of so my <laughs> he gets up there and says, I know these are disturbing questions. I'm just trying to. How about a defense for your client? Like, did you escalate things here? Did you start the physical interaction? Was my client peaceful and just saying he didn't agree? My questions may seem a little foolish, but I'm legally blind. I'm simply trying to find out the details of various things that happened. Some of my questions may seem a little foolish, but I'm legally blind and I can't always tell from the films what happened and I can't drive. So some of these questions relate to that. Uh, where were you headed that night on Sevilla? He can't see the video, and now he's going to put a defense on based on video evidence. So you were just on a routine patrol. What 
brought your attention to the vehicle that Mr. DeHart was driving. The way he was driving. Can you describe it for us, please? I take it you have been trained in uh, stops for, for driving under the influence. This is so painful to watch. Of a person educated, or were you simply worried that he was endangering other drivers and violating the law? Okay. So, so she's, he's pretty much setting it up so they can put him in the dungeon. Did you form an opinion as to whether Mr. DeHart was being honest with you when, when you were talking with him when he was inside the car? I didn't have an opinion of whether he was being honest with you. But you did think he might be under the influence. Yes. So it was your intention that he get out of the car so that he undergo like the one leg stand and the walk and turn and those standardized field sobriety tests. And he refused to do that. Go get your partner and tell him to come over and sniff. You, you can't refuse a search. Why can't I refuse a search? Because I've, I've got probable cause to search the vehicle no because of the smell. Cause. Nobody okay. trying to be messy for no reason. It looked like that you continued to interact with Mr. Hart for what, four or five minutes maybe until Officer McGowan arrived. Yes. If I could tell right from the video, that was used twice. Three times. All right. Out of the car! What are you for, man? Get out of the car! What are you looking for? Taser the board. Get out of the car! Please! Please stop! Let me stop my memo! Get out of the car! 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 Mr. DeHart was wearing a seatbelt, correct? Yes. So you couldn't just pull him out without having to undo the belt. <laughs> Honey, it doesn't matter if you're incapacitated or not. You're not equipped to take on a full-grown man. I'm sorry. I don't care what kind of garbage they've been feeding these Americans through television, but women are not equipped to take on men. Put your hands on the vehicle now! Did you see Mr. DeHart pull his gun out? I heard the gunshots and I was immediately on the Oh, uh, so you don't know, you had not seen the gun before? No. And you don't know where, it, you didn't know where it came from? No, it, it came from inside the vehicle, but I don't know where it came from. How many shots were fired? I, I heard several in a very short period of time. I believe it was five. A, a shot like that, if it hits you in the knee, you, you just fall down totally unable to can't see anything else basically is that right help help i've been shot can i do anything uh, yes get out i need your help when i got hit my body kind of turned or my back was facing the vehicle so i, I kind of turned it over so my, my back was to everything happened. i mean he's leading the witness did you just hear that he's leading the witness Ended in my knee. I, I, I guess it's been a year or two ago. I fell and tore up the tendon in my knee, and I just remember being on the ground and not able to see or think about much of anything except what had happened to me. So, did did you actually see much of anything happen from then on? I heard everything happening. I was eventually able to gain my composure, get back on my feet, and uh, do as I was trained to do. Um, I could not see everything happening behind me. I got a ran behind it from the county and I was able to see it. Kenny doesn't have a but, chance. And at, at that point, off, Deputy McGowan was on the ground. Yes. You, you talked to your partner. Was your partner still in the car during all this? Uh -huh. didn't, didn't you say you were riding with somebody? No. Oh my God. This is, this is so, so painful to watch. This is so painful to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new redesigned Fifth Amendment cop card. Now the driver card is in blue and the non-driver card is in yellow. Now they're easily color coded. So you know driving is blue, non-driving is yellow. You have to have a pair of Fifth Amendment cop cards in your wallet at all times. If you carry your credit cards in your phone, it's the exact same size as your visa, as your driver's license. And these cards, they're made out of the exact same material as a hotel key, your visa card, your driver's license. 
They don't destroy. It won't melt in your wallet. You need to have a Fifth Amendment driver and non-driver cop card in your wallet. These are the best gift you'll ever give anybody. Thanks. My name is Chili DeCastro, and I am Delete Laws.